Hello viewers, I have a pleasure of presenting to you Samsung Galaxy Watch 4. So it comes in two versions. We have the Watch 4, which is what I have here. And then we have the Watch 4 Classic. So in terms of the watch itself, it seems to be the same internals, everything being the same, i.e. for the 4 and the 4 Classic. However, there are differences in size and colors as you look to select one of them. Other things in the box, the charger, yeah, charger power. For body fat measurement, you have to put both hands on the power button and the back button to make sure it records your reading and it will confirm your your weight and so once your hand is there then it will start recording so you have to ensure your hand is not touching each other and your hand is a bit further away from the body and then it will measure it and tell you what your body is composed of with all those nice re reports so that's really good and it, it, it does a whole lot of things as you can see different activities can be mapped onto it to enjoy you know your workout session but i think the interesting point i wanted to put across is it has all this flexibility for you to customize the watch the way you want it so if you wanted to change the watch face you long press on it and then it gives you options so you can choose from any of these watch faces whichever works for you and you you have that literally so it's really nice and it makes you enjoy the watch much more than you would have if you were not having all this flexibility yeah so again you can have all your apps too on it even google maps you can make calls you can respond to messages and your calendar you can do the pay actually the back button can also be used for or set up your pay so samsung pay and you can listen to music as well so it's really nice you can control your earbuds as well from here so it does an exciting job and for me what made me go for this particular one is the fact that you know you have all these um, apps and all these functionalities and you have the digital bezel compared to physical bezel on the other one and the physical bezel again is another rotating part to consider if your hands are wet of course it's probably the best to have the physical bezel but if you're the kind who knows when you're using the watch you're not going to have your hands dirty or soiled then obviously you can opt for this option that doesn't you know have all these complications with the physical bezel moving around and also is extra hundred pounds if you wanted the um, watch for classic so you know for extra 100 pound what do you get with a classic you get that physical bezel and you also get the stainless steel on the classic whereas it's aluminium on the watch 4 but with these things and technology i'm not sure you use the watch for so long that you want to even upgrade as a result of how fast technology is going so yeah that makes it you know comfortable to go with this one because again it's 100 pound less than the classic and for me i think it's just a physical bezel on the classic and then, then the stainless steel on the classic that probably accounts for that difference otherwise in terms of function and in terms of um, uh, processing and everything is 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 the same you know yeah but again because you have sizes ranging from 40 millimeters to 46 millimeters across both watches you tend to be in that situation where you know the battery range for instance will be like from 247 
milliamp battery to 361 milliamp battery so depending on the size then you know you go for the um, highest battery for the largest size and smaller battery for the smallest size if you see what i mean and it has wireless charging so you can charge with your phone if your phone has power share functionality and it connects bluetooth or lte or wi-fi so this one that i have here is you know the bluetooth connection one because you need to check with your carrier to know whether your carrier actually will deliver on you having the same number in your watch as your phone so that you know when your phone is away from your watch then you'll still be able to do all the nice stuff that you need to do otherwise you probably would have to get a separate chip for your watch which is what i wasn't intending to you know get this watch for so bluetooth that's it for me because i'm always connected to the phone and wherever i go have the phone with me so if you're making the choice between the bluetooth one or the lte one you just need to be sure that your carrier has packages for you to be able to have your same number the, the number on your phone in your watch so that you get that seamless experience of your watch connecting to your phone i think in the uk vodafone and ee seem to have some arrangement to help you be able to sort of use the same number on your network but other uh, providers are unable to do that so you need to check with your providers in your location to ensure that you know you're getting value for that extra money that you pay because i think in the us you pay extra 50 dollars to get the lte version for whatever watch that is of your choice so you just need to ensure that you making the right decision based on the choice you make because whatever choice you make would have consequences on the price now when it comes to selecting the kind of watch it's really a key thing to note because there are so many versions in terms of colors so for the classic you have silver and black and for the regular watch for you have myriads of colors including pink green and silver as well black so a host of them and then the sizes for classic is just two so you have the 42 millimeter size and then the 46 millimeter size for the four regular you have 44 and 40 so what i'm having here is the 40 size 41 and even the 40 it looks a bit big in terms of the coverage on the wrist so just something to note if you're making a selection because otherwise you get one that is probably bigger than your your wrist and so you just want to get the type that fits perfectly for your wrist yeah so in terms of uh, specs so this one comes with Wear OS 3 powered by samsung but it's actually a partnership between samsung and google and it has interesting features it has a ram of 1.5 gig and 16 gigabyte storage so that is really exciting and it ships with the exynos w920 processor so it's faster in terms of gpu and cpu compared to the previous versions and exciting features about the watch is uh, blood pressure and ecg is restricted to certain countries only and you need to check when you're getting it for if you're getting it for that function you need to check that your country is included in a list of countries that are supposed to be covered by the um restrictions if you see what i mean so i think about 40 countries have now been given the opportunity to have those functions in those countries and so if your country is one then you have that functionality my country happens to be one so i can have that functionality and i will measure that for you in a second so what you need to do in order to get your blood pressure calibrated on your watch or to get the measurement calibrated on your watch so that you can take your blood pressure you need to put a watch on 
and snag it you know such that it's not coming off it's a bit up and you know it's tight enough for you to take the measurement and then you pull on the opposite hand so i have my watch on the left so on the right i will have my blood pressure monitor the actual one maybe one of those home kits that you can get from the shops and then you take your measurement on the actual blood pressure monitor and so once you take that measurement then you take the measurement on your watch as well so one thing you need to do is you need to be still when you're taking the blood pressure so your readings are accurate and you take three times of actual blood pressure reading on the monitor and on your watch at the same time and then you record the results that you get on the actual blood pressure monitor onto your phone your phone which is paired to your watch and so for those three readings once you're able to do those three readings successfully then the watch would have been calibrated for you to be able to now just measure blood pressure with only the watch it's quite straightforward and intuitive and it comes with a guide on your phone so i have already calibrated my watch so i can take the blood pressure now and so it will take like that and you know it tells you the percentage but because i'm talking the results might not be as you would want it to be so i'll just keep mute in a sec and just see what happens yeah but exactly like this by the time you get to 100 then everything will come through yeah so that is how blood pressure is taken on the watch the other thing that you can also take is the let's do the ecg also ecg you don't need to recalibrate anything unlike blood pressure where we had to recalibrate and the blood pressure calibration again you would have to do it in 28 days time you have to recalibrate again but for ecg it's just straight you only need to record it making sure your hand is on the power button again you sit still and it will take the measurement for you it will update you on your phone based on your results and it will give you a nice report that you can be able to determine what's going on i think that's all for now i will leave it here and kindly let me know your comments on what you want to see in the next review and also let me know what test you want me to perform on this watch and if you're going for any of these let me know the type you're going for watch 4 or the watch 4 classic otherwise see you in the next one bye